What is up everybody, it's Chris from Team Aquascape. Today, we are gonna be doing a clean out on the oldest pond here at Aqualand. Let's go. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So as I said, we are doing a clean out on the oldest pond here at Aqualand. This one was actually built before our signature pond out in front, that huge one that you always see in the intro videos. This was the first one before the building was even built and we are cleaning it out today. It's that time of year where leaves aren't even on the trees yet but the buds are about to open, warm weather is upon us and that means to us it's spring startup time for all of our water features. On this pond we're struggling with a little bit with water clarity and some string algae is starting to build up so what better time to clean this out than right now. To help explain to you guys and myself on some of the reasoning why we do that as well as the timing being so essential we've got this man back over here mr ed Ballou. What's up? What's up, buddy? Oh yeah. Good man. Awesome. Springtime. It is springtime. <laughs> and it's actually beautiful. It's like 73 degrees. <laughs> this is nuts. This is nuts. <laughs> it's March. But I know it's not gonna last long, but hey, this is a great day. I'm happy to be outside. I never knew that this was the oldest pond. Yeah, 2005. That's incredible. Know, right? 17 years old. I can't believe it. And yeah. this thing still runs like the stallion that it is, it's, right? Uh, it's, it's incredible. Because it was set up right, but it's also due to maintenance. You know, we have to uh, follow up with uh, the little maintenance procedures makes all the difference in the world. Periodic full cleanouts, which is what we're gonna be doing today, as well as bacterial additions to make sure that the pond is fully stocked with all the necessary pieces and parts. The little microorganisms that I know you love me talking about that are gonna make this pond function at its peak. So Ed, we've been doing cleanouts really since we started building ponds, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, 30 plus years. Yeah, and it's a system that as you guys started, you worked your way through some of the head scratching moments and that kind of stuff. But right. more importantly, what is really the philosophy behind the spring cleanout. So the philosophy behind the spring cleanout is we're recreating natural ecosystems. So we use that biomimicry concept. So biomimicry is use, we're using nature's time-tested concepts. You know, this is this works in nature. Ecosystems, rivers, ponds, lakes. We're going to take certain pieces and parts of that and we're going to recreate it. So we've created here kind of a river system. We call it a pond, but look at it. We have a flow from one end going out the other. Constant flow going through it. It's mimicking more of an, a riverine type of a system. So if we look at riverine systems here in the northern climates, we get ice cover over everything. We get heavy amounts of snow coming in. We get heavy spring rains and that type of stuff coming in place. So what we want to do is mimic that. So when those heavy spring rains come in place in rivers, it literally blasts all that water through. So we have these flood type episodes that come through. This is very important for our local rivers because it takes all the detritus, all that stuff that has been kind of locked under the ice for many, many months and it pushes it further downstream. It also turns it up and by turning it up it infuses oxygen in there, helps the biological processes to break that stuff down. So what we want to do is mimic that exact same thing. So our clean out is mimicking a flood. So we're going to come through and flush everything out. We're going to remove the water. By doing that we're removing some of that excess detritus that is built up on the bottom. We're bringing in new water into the system exactly like a flood and I think that's really important especially when we start talking about a closed ecosystem. So this is a closed system. We do get some rain water coming in here and things like that but for the most part it's a closed system so what happens in a closed system is you start to break down and you start to utilize dissolved compounds that are in the water so what we're doing by adding new city water into it it's a process known as the mineralization process so we're going to bring in new dissolved minerals into this ecosystem which is very important for the fish health so it's a very healthy for the biological filter and all those little intricate processes that are actually occurring biologically inside of this ecosystem now we don't want to remove all the detritus. We want to leave some of the algae because those are important parts. We want to balance it. We want to remove the bulk of it. We want to get rid of those heavy sediments and things like that. Open up those gravel beds just like in nature because those gravel beds are very important from a biological standpoint for spawning areas for fish as well as all the other little microorganisms that are responsible for feeding on the rest of the detritus and those organic compounds in the system. So I think the next step is going to be draining all that stuff out, flushing it to mimic that flood type of an activity then start out fresh with new water. There's a lot of things that are going to have to happen, obviously, with the fish, which is why we're doing it this time of the year. Springtime, the fish are actually just coming out of that winter sleep. Their biology is not actually super active yet. So what we want to do is this is a perfect time of the year to do that because the biology has not increased. So it's slowly starting to ramp up. The more warm days like this that are going to occur, the more the biology starts to increase. And you're going to see this rapid increase of overall biodiversity inside the ecosystem. 
So it's important for us to get a jump on it now because we're following lockstep with the timing of mother nature, right? Correct. So as it's warming up, again, it's man-made, but that's that biomimicry. It's not just the end result, but it's also the process of how to maintain the ponds. Exactly. Right? Ed, that's awesome. You're gonna be here for the rest of the video, right? I'll be in and out. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. We've got the rest of these guys that are starting to roll through, but fantastic that Ed's gonna be here because he's gonna answer so many of those questions and those talking points throughout the video. Now what we're gonna do is, as you can see behind me, we've got the clean out truck. We're gonna go ahead and get our tanks, our collapsible tanks set out. We're gonna drain this thing, start pulling the fish out, get as much of the harvestable water out as we can because we wanna be able to put that stuff back in and then start scrubbing this thing down, simulating that spring flood of rains, get this thing cleaned out. And as we're going through it, Ed's gonna answer some of those questions and offer some more insight throughout the process on some of the little things that we do to help the process along and get this thing kick-started and ready to roll for the year. Let's go. So we've got most of the water out of here. We're down to about the last foot or so. Into here you can see the fish a heck of a lot better than you could earlier. And we ended up using, I think, three, yeah, one, two, and three clean out pumps, filling up all these tanks. So we wanna make sure that we harvest as much of that water as possible. Now what we're gonna do is pull the biomedia out of the bio falls itself and kind of rinse that off using the water from the pond. And Ed is back and he can kind of explain that to you. So, Edgar? Yes, sir. Did you have yourself a nice little lunch? <laughs> I did. Me too. And I had to get some little sciencey stuff for some upcoming vlogs. You, sciencey. It's gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bud, we've got almost four full tanks. Yep. We've got a little bit left to go. Yeah. This is about the point in time where we pull the filter pads and, yeah. and media out of the biofalls. So, okay. let's take a walk up here. So this is the start of the waterfalls up here. This is an upflow chamber. Water comes up because it's pumped from the pumps that are down on the opposite end back this way, pumped up through here, and then overflows and then comes down this beautiful waterfalls. But in here, there's a lot of magic happening, correct? Yeah, exactly. So this is kind of the really the point of the filtration. So we have, this works in conjunction with the pre-filters. Down at the bottom, you have that negative edge, aqua box, all the water goes down through the river rock and all that stuff to get the big solids out. That's an important important piece. So we want to remove as much of that big organic stuff as possible because if it's left inside, it'll eventually clog up the filter media. So what we want to do, we end up a lot of water flow going through this. Now you can see there is some sediments and stuff inside of here. This is just like a really fine organic material. I mean, it's just like, I mean, it's, it's a little bit gritty, you know, it probably has a little bit of sand and stuff and rock dust and that type of stuff in there. But it's basically, this is material that has gone through the biological processes. So it's getting broken down by all the bacteria and enzymes so this is going to be uh, pieces of leaf debris there's probably you know fish waste inside of here there's going to be all types of just organic compounds as well as even blown in dirt that gets blown inside of the system and then recirculated and ends up in here now the way this is designed we have a sedimentation chamber on the bottom so we have fast moving water coming in kind of swirls around a little bit of a sediment chamber down in there then the water is going to flow up through the different layers of filter media so you can see you have oh, this uh, filter yeah so we've got get so some rocks on here to kind of ballast everything because this material on the this biomedia is actually neutrally buoyant so that means it's gonna the same weight as water and there's a part of a frog of some sort maybe mm -hmm. yummy yeah so these are those filter pads you were just talking about yeah, huh, Ed? exactly yeah those are the filter pads so let me grab another end here got it yep oh boy Nice. So there's a couple of them inside of here and you can see they are just loaded with stuff. I mean, you squeeze that out. I mean, it's just uh, all this nasty sediments and stuff like that. So we're gonna power wash that. And that's because the nitrifying bacteria, they don't really like a lot of sediment. So true nitrification is they need a surface area which is provided by this media. So it's kind of three dimensional. It's got high flow going through it. Uh, but what happens as it gets clogged up, it starts to shift from nitrification. You start to get just more facultative bacteria and stuff like that, which will feed off of a wide variety of compounds, but it's not nitrifying specifically. So what we want to do is clean that stuff out. Mm -hmm. It's going to give us a better start to the year because these fish are going to be a little bit stressed out in the beginning. We might see a little bit of a spike in ammonia production because the fish have not been eating a lot. And the food that they have been eating has been algae. So algae, it does not have a lot of protein in it. So it's actually good for the fish to start the, their biological processes out, but there's not a lot of protein 
protein. And the reason I bring up protein is protein is made up of different chains of amino acids. Those amino acids are comprised of nitrogen compounds. Nitrogen compounds, after they go through the fish, that's where ammonia comes from. So the higher the protein in your fish food, that means the higher the ammonia that's gonna be released into the pond. That's why it all goes back. <laughs> the ammonia is gonna get broken down by the nitrifying bacteria that live in that surface media itself. All these things are tied together very, very tightly. So as soon as you start making changes, you're gonna see this whole ripple effect that starts to occur. So like I said, very important for the fish to feed off of algae during the winter and spring months. A good boost of energy for them, but it's not gonna pack on a lot of weight for them. So this is just a jump start to their biology. So now is a perfect time of the year to get everything ready for that new flush of ammonia from the food that we're gonna start feeding these fish. Awesome. So essentially what we're doing is we are just cleaning off this strata, right? Yep. This filter media and allowing it to do what it does. We're just making room, right? Just making room. So we want to have a high flow rate, a lack of this type of stuff. So what we want to do is we want to rinse that off with water from the pond. Cool. Don't use chlorinated water because that's going to kill some of that those microorganisms and stuff like that. So just heavy flows of water just to flush that material out. Then it could all be put back in place. And a lot of times what we'll do, like Ed said, is, is using the pond water. We'll take the clean out pump and some of that excess water that's down at the very bottom, we will use the flow of the clean out pump and just kind of blast this stuff off. Occasionally, if you use a high PSI pressure washer and you try and rinse these things off, you're gonna blow holes in them. And we wanna be able to keep these things year after year until they basically become unusable after years and years of cleaning. So try using your clean out pump and rinsing it out. So we're gonna show you that. Another source of filter media that we had in here are bio balls. These are a plastic engineered, well, here's one. Ed, explain real quick the theory behind the bio balls and how they tie in and they're they're kind of an added value. Yeah, exactly. So the filter pads are gonna pull a lot of that finer sediment out, high surface area because of just that tightly woven nature of that material. So the bio balls themselves, these are not gonna get clogged up with sediment. So that filter media or the, those pads you saw, I was squeezing all that stuff out of it. Now this uh, just came out of the system and it's, and it's actually very, very clean. So because of the surface, it's not prone to getting clogged up, which is important. So this becomes a really good supplemental home to all those nitrifying bacteria and different things that are gonna colonize literally every square millimeter of that type of thing. It's about a one inch sphere, yep. right? Yep. But I see all of the space in between. Yeah, so, so you're really maximizing the surface area for bacteria and the enzymes to colonize it. on, that's right? That's exactly it. So wow. all these little fins and things like that allow water flow, which is really important with a filter because the little animals that live on this surface, they're highly aerobic. So just like us, they are breathing. So the more they eat, the more they need to breathe to oxidize all those compounds. Wow. So oxygen rich water is gonna flow through with the nutrients and then it's gonna get flushed out the back end. So there's gonna be carbon dioxide and all types of waste products that are gonna be expelled from the system. So you'll want that constant flow of water, mm -hmm. which is critical. If it's too low, the system actually will crash, which brings up a whole nother component when we're starting to talk about the biofalls. The outfall of the biofalls is always a waterfall and that's because of the aerobic nature of these organisms. They're consuming the dissolved oxygen in the water. So we want to re-oxygenate the water before it goes back into the pond to make it safe for the fish. Wow. Just this beautiful little <laughs> synergy of stuff that actually happens. I love it's it. It's just awesome. I love it. <laughs> so let's show you guys real quick how we're gonna rinse off those filter pads. And I'm seeing the water level in the pond drop down to now we can finally get to that fish, get those out of there. I wanna get Ed to explain to you some of the things to think about when you are transporting fish in and out of the pond and, and how to take really good care of them. So let's go down here, flash these filter pads. Jack attack. What? Mm, it's a nice day out. You look nice today. Thank you, you too. You too. Looks like your, um, your 4 a.m. hair, like your yeah, bed head. I know, it's a little bit. My hat. Here we go. Boom. So notice how just that couple thousand gallons per hour on that pump does a really good job of kind of cleaning these mats off without blowing holes through the filter pads themselves. You'll want to flip them back and forth, back and forth, because as he's rinsing, he's pushing those solids down and that sediment down. And what they'll do is they will end up on the bottom or what would be the back of that filter pad. So you can see how he's just flipping it from side to side and then just look at all that crap and gook that's coming out of there. So Jack's gonna rinse those, rinse that stuff out. We will rinse the biofalls, get that pump down as well. So now it's time to talk about the fish. So you can see Josh gently helping the koi into the net. This net will actually hold water 
inside of it. So the fish will actually be in water as they're transported. Very, very cool. We started doing this years back and Ed, a big reason for this is just safety of the fish. Yeah, exactly. So what's interesting about fish, they spend obviously their entire life inside of water. So specific gravity of water is one. Specific gravity of the air that we're in is zero. So that means there's a big pressure differential. If you were to take that fish out of the water, now it is not supported all the way around. So it's been swimming around, it's neutrally buoyant. So so that means it kind of just sits in that water column, has full support all the way around its entire body. As soon as you pull them out and they eliminate that water, now all their internal organs, the entire mass of the body is gonna be pushing down on their internal organs. And actually in years past when we didn't have that device and I was moving big fish, I would see blood coming out of their gills. Blood coming out of gills is never, never, ever a good thing. So that means we're putting undue stress on inside of them and it increases pressure. Pressure forced that blood out through the gills when it should be the opposite. It should be a, an avenue for, for nutrients and oxygen transfers and things like that. So by doing that, by just having an, an envelope of water around them, it gently supports their entire body. You can't do it with your hand. You can't do it with a towel. The best way to do it is with a pocket of water. That device, groundbreaking. I mean, that changes everything for them. It's gonna increase the survival rate for the fish, makes that transfer much better. This time of the year, still a little bit tricky for them because their biology is not 100% functioning. They need warmer water. Water right now temperatures are going to be upper 40s, low 50s. We had ice went out just recently. It is going to start warming up quickly, but their immune system is not fully functioning. So if you were to stress them by moving them improperly, stressing them out, you could actually have fatalities. So by doing this, it's alleviating some of that stress, safely moving them from point A to point B and back, allowing that water to warm back up. And now then you're going to have a seamless transition for the rest of the season. So a couple things maybe that some of our viewers may or may not know already is what are some identifiable signs of fish that are overstressed? I, I can see their fins being pinned back. They right. start to turn almost a pinkish color. Yeah, the tips of the fins, you're going to see blood going into them. So that definitely is a sign of stress. You could also see sometimes you'll see a pine coning effect. That's when the scales are going to start to push out a little bit. In other situations, you might see kind of like a, an odd film on them. So the fish are covered in a biofilm, like a slime coating. So we want to be very, very conscious of that. So again, by using that bag concept, we're not actually grabbing the fish, which breaks away that slime coating. That slime coating is a protective membrane that goes around them, and it's gonna help protect them from getting different types of illnesses. They could get viral infections and things like that. And the reason I bring that up is if you start to see kind of like a, a weird, kind of a cloudy, foggy color, them, that means there could be an infection on them. There's something happening with that biofilm, which is very important for the overall health and safety of the fish. So that might be a visual indicator it for- definitely is for the, the pond owners to identify that maybe there could be something wrong. Yeah. And then the other thing you want to look for, you know, if the pond is not clean. So it, look down in the water here. You see all that stuff that's getting stirred up? Yeah. So that's kind of a, a mixture of decomposing compounds and bacteria and stuff like that. When you start stir that stuff up and in springtime, you could have a high biological oxygen demand inside of the pond. So that's a combination of not only fish, but all the little microorganisms. So what could happen if you have a lot of organic organic compounds in there. The dissolved oxygen, even with a waterfall, may crash and it could stress the fish. So this time of the year, you might see your fish up at the surface gasping for air. So they're bringing in a mixture of water and air into their mouth and through their gills because they're starving for oxygen. And if that were to happen to a person, if you're stressed and if you can't get enough air into you, if you have a lung infection, pneumonia, something like that, there's a lot of side effects that are gonna come for that. So you wanna make sure you have high dissolved oxygen. So removing all that stuff is gonna lower the biological oxygen oxygen demand increases the overall dissolved oxygen in the system and that's the name of the game if you can play around with a couple of these factors mm -hmm. you're gonna have an incredible pond and you're not gonna have any issues nice so you're cleaning it out you're creating more available dissolved oxygen as opposed to it being all locked Correct. up Correct. exactly all that stuff cool. down in the bottom is sucking oxygen out of the water and I know we've showed it in the videos before but the fish in the tub here we are going to be putting an aerator in there so that they will be able to have that supplemental oxygen and be able to have just that water movement while they're in the holding tanks before they can come back in yeah. here. We want to make it as stressless as possible. So these are all some of those little things that we're doing. Actually, not even little things, big things that we're doing to try and take care of that stuff. Ed, while we're over here, earlier you had talked about the importance of algae and as being a food source this time of year. Yeah. And I'm looking at the pond as it's drained and 
you can see a lot of the stuff right at the water line and then yeah. even down below. Do you want to talk about some yeah, of that real you know, quick? So a lot of that looks like the fish have been grazing on it. So there is algae on there, but it's minimal. That's a good thing. I know some people may freak out about it and they're going to say, oh my God, I want to have my on gen running during the winter time. I want to use algicides in the winter time. Let that stuff grow because for two reasons. One, algae is a photosynthetic plant. It's going to grow using the process of photosynthesis. It's going to consume carbon dioxide. It's going to release oxygen into the water. So it's actually producing oxygen. The other thing that it's doing, it's actually removing ammonia and some of those other dissolved compounds through their growth processes. The final reason is it's going to be a supplemental food source for all the fish inside of the pond. They go and they could lightly graze on all that material. The fish's biology, because they're cold blooded, they don't have the heat like we do to break down stuff inside their stomach during the winter months. So they can't digest proteins. It could actually kill them. So by having algae, by having plant material, they could easily process that through their digestive system. It's gonna be a nice little supplemental food source, Bob. It'll pass through them, but it helps with the overall biology. And then also associated with the algae, all types of other little plankton and microorganisms and biofilms and slimes and stuff like that, which will help to round that out. That's actually the natural food source for this particular species. They feed on the surfaces. They feed and they graze on grasses and algae. They're gonna pick up mouthfuls of small gravel and sand and stuff like that, and they're gonna clean it, and they're gonna eat the material that's actually living on those surfaces. <laughs> that's why we design and build ecosystem ponds. It mimics that natural food source for the species. Have you guys learned something yet? If you haven't, you've been sleeping. <laughs> But, or they're sleeping now. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and get the clean out started, get it going. There's a couple more parts during this video that I wanna pull Ed back in here and really explain parts of the process, but also some key elements of the pond. We talked about the biofilter and it being essentially the liver of the system, but I also wanna talk to you about the mechanical filter. And on this pond, it is a negative edge. So we'll get to that here in a little bit. We've got the pond now completely cleaned out, 99.9% .9 rinsed. You can see the water is flowing clear over the top down to the clean out pumps. So now we're gonna pull the pumps. We've got all of the lights replaced with our color changing lights. This one is not on yet, but you can see back over there, over in that area, and then over there, we've replaced all of the existing white lights with color changing lights. So the guys are working on that right now. It's a perfect and opportune time to do this. So those of you out there doing clean outs, if you are looking to change your lights or replace any bad fixtures, go ahead and do so at that time. But we're gonna go ahead and start throwing this water back in and then top it off with the garden hose. Super important to do that if you are filling the pond with treated or chlorinated water, make sure you add the appropriate amount of pond detoxifier to help neutralize all that goofy crap that they put in the water to make it safe for you and I to drink straight out of the tap. So all the chloramines, chlorides, chlorine, that kind of stuff, you wanna get out of there and that will help pull all that crap and neutralize it out of the water, making it safe for the fish. You'll also want to start with some pond starter bacteria to get that ecosystem quickly reestablished because you've taken so much of that stuff away and by putting in treated water, you can potentially kill a lot of that stuff that is still growing and remaining on the rock and gravel. So you wanna reestablish that as soon as possible and continue to supplement that throughout the year. That will help stay on top of the overall maintenance of this project.
everybody, that is a wrap for the day. The clean out is done. Hopefully, you guys learned a thing or two about a spring clean out on ponds, why they're so necessary, what they actually mean to the pond itself, and then some of those little tips and tricks that we do to kind of help you guys. We talked about the using the clean out hose to clean off the filter media. We talked about the importance of doing them in the spring to simulate that spring flood or flush of the system itself. All kinds of good stuff. Lots and lots of good stuff from Ed the Pond Professor. Thanks so much to him, and thanks so much to you guys for watching. Till next time, we'll see you later.